Hi everybody, and welcome to another video. So I want to apologize if you're hearing kind of an echo in the background. It's the way our, our new house is shaped. We seem to have a lot of sounds vibrating up the, the walls and things. So we're trying to work on getting some panels at some point. Um, what it is, I wrote a paper on the thoughts in your head, what they are, where they come from, and how they help create the reality that you're having. And that would be about 11 pages long, which is kind of long to be posting on Facebook, so I thought I would read it into the video first, and then if people have an interest in it, I can always post it as a, as a writing paper later on, but it is fairly long, so we'll go ahead and get started. A few thoughts, actually more than a few, about what happens when people spend thought time living in the past, fantasizing about being different now or in the future, or fearing what might happen in the future. Keep in mind, when I say the future, I'm not talking about things that you're actually going to do and not just say you're going to do and you have to sit up. And that would be something like a, a big trade vacation or a trip or something you have coming up that you need to do and make reservations and you set up ahead of time. They're, that's perfectly fine. And you'll see why as we go along. And along that line, if you don't have the means or the ability to accomplish what you were thinking about, don't waste your time fantasizing or planning it out. And you'll understand as we go along. A couple of studies have shown that the human brain is reacting to what is coming next as much as 11 seconds before the person becomes consciously aware of it before you have a thought or think you are making a choice. There are studies online that, that uh, go into more detail. If you want to look them up, I'm not going to post them because if you have an interest, I'll let you do your own research on that. But just think about that. 11 seconds, your brain is reacting to what's coming before you're even aware of it. That's huge. This clearly shows that we're reaching reacting, responding to, experiencing a reality that is already set before we are aware of it, meaning we're actually living in the past since the experience we are going to have has already happened. <clears throat> you are not making decisions as you, but you do have an illusion of choice. Your thoughts don't create your reality, your thoughts are a created reality. When you think about it, you'll understand that. It shows that forces outside of your human body are in control of our reality and it's being processed through the brain, which is our energy center I talked about before, our torsion field, to get a physical response to feeling and emotions, which is what we're here to experience. You can call that force your higher self, the creator, God, or any other name you would like to give, but you, as the role you're playing, are not creating your reality. You're experiencing what has already been chosen. I've gone into a lot more detail on creation, freedom of choice, illusion of free will, in my book and other videos, so I'm not going to rehash that here because it make it way too long. You may be asking what this has to do with our fear thoughts, fantasizing, or focusing on our past. Yeah, the thoughts are not our own and we have no control over them. That's a good question. And I'll explain this perceived paradox as best I can. A paradox is really just events that seem to counter common sense or logic from our point of reason. But in reality, it's simply that we can't see how all the events or forces above our reason are working, which makes what we see as a paradox, a logical conclusion to a series of events or, or root causes. And the Kabbalah talks a lot about that, calling them roots and branches. Keep in mind that all existence already exists as vibrations, what we call possibilities. And when you read this paper together with my last paper on why some people are hearing voices, and where they're coming from, you'll see how seemingly unrelated events are actually part of a bigger picture on how reality works. Your thoughts, or at least what you think are your thoughts, are coming from aspects of you in 4 and 5D. Yeah. And 3D is the projected reality where those thoughts are being experienced as physical. The 4D thoughts are what we would call our ego, or resisting, or Satan, while those from 5D are the spiritual, allowing from our higher self the Christ energy. It doesn't mean there are no ego thoughts from 5D and no spiritual thoughts from 4D because all creation has duality or it wouldn't exist. It just means that the ego side of duality is stronger in 4D while the spiritual side of duality is stronger in 5D. 3D was created to experience bringing those energies back into balance. It's very possible that we will experience a new dimension when this is done because remember, dimensions are just different vibrations or states of awareness. Because all thoughts 
are the allegoric translations of vibrations, and I did a, a video on allegories and allegoric translation of reality. Those thoughts actually exist as experiences, possibilities, somewhere in the fear, fantasizing, living in the past, or living in the now, determine where those thoughts exist or manifest, as we like to say. When we're dwelling on or in our past, usually thinking about what if I had done that instead of this, if I could change that to this, my life would now be great, or I still have regrets over something that we've done, or allowing 4D voices, the energies, the ego, to direct and control our experience, and those energies are allowing 4D to exist by keeping those vibrations manifesting in 4D. Uh, I did a video on what Saturn is, and that has to do with how and why 4D was created, and so on, but you can watch that if you want in the Saturn video. Yes, we are living in our thought past. Those vibrations, energies are playing out in 4D because of how time is perceived there. Time is experienced differently on darker levels, and in a way it doesn't exist at the creative level, yet it does because of thought that created creation. Not necessarily the events are playing out in 4D, but the energy of those events and thoughts do. This is possibly because this is possible because past, present, and future don't exist. All time exists together. Each moment can be experienced independent of any other moment. And again, we've done some more videos on that as well. Living in the past is keeping us from receiving all we could during this incarnation, because as far as the universe or the Creator is concerned, we are living in experiencing that reality of the past. So it isn't time for us or we aren't ready to receive what we will receive. <clears throat> this, of course, seems to be another paradox, since how can we receive more in this incarnation than we are supposed to? Yet by changing how we deal with our thoughts and emotions, we can change what we are experiencing during this incarnation. If you've had experiences in your past that still cause to feel guilt or regret, you need to deal with them and let those emotions go before they destroy you. You can't go to the past physically, and if you could change anything, you would then change everything from that moment forward. Can you imagine how much would change in your life, not to mention everyone you've ever come in contact with since that moment, because of how changing a single event or experience in your life would affect, kind of like a domino effect. Maybe what you regret wasn't even experienced for you, but for the person you did it to, and by wanting it changed, you're taking away from their life what they needed to experience. So don't be so, so, so selfish. You have to understand that everything that happened to you from the moment of creation was supposed to happen. If you disagree, you're saying that you know more than the Creator what should have happened. And can anyone say that would be a major ego program? And by saying it was wrong, you're saying there's no purpose to anything that happens. You understand that you may not like some of the things that you did in the past, but you can now see and accept that you were supposed to do them. What you can do is change how you deal with those types of experiences now and as they come up. Of course, you can't deal with those events in the future because when they happen, they will be in the now. If you feel the need to contact someone from your past and say you're sorry and ask forgiveness, that's your choice. Don't ask them if there's anything you can do for them to make it up, because what you're really saying is what's it going to cost you to get them to like you again, basically a bribe. That's really not forgiveness. If they are now dead, they can't be holding a grudge against you, so let go of it. So one school of thought is that we have to go back into our past energetically, through our thoughts, and relive really those moments, changing how we experience them. This again goes back to the idea that we're telling the Creator, and I say He, but there's no gender at that level, was wrong, and you know what should have been done. Corrections in the now changes all time, so stay present and deal with what needs to be dealt with. I did a video concerning correcting your family lines, and that goes into more detail about how what you do now <coughs> changes your entire genetic line, because remember, it all exists simultaneously. There's nothing wrong with sitting around with the family to talk about past events of what you experienced as long as you don't spend all your time doing that. Your family is dealing with the same emotional issues as you, only in different ways. And sometimes talking about those events 
and then dealing with them together can be very helpful. When you're dealing with your past, remember the past is the past. Learn from it and live now. When we live in fear about the future, which is the only fear there is, it's again thought vibrations from 4D. Remember fear is being afraid of what you imagine might happen, an illusion, not what's actually going to happen or could ever happen. Most of that fear thought energy returns to 4D, but there are times when it manifests in our 3D lives where we temporarily shift to 4D, I can't tell you which it is, in order to encourage us to accept more of those thoughts so when something happens, we feel justified of having had those thoughts. You see, I told you that would happen. Your thoughts are creating emotions, and your emotions are creating your thoughts. Again, the Creator Universe is not providing you with what you could be receiving, because what thoughts or vibrations you are accepting and living in. The Creator Universe doesn't reward or punish you for your thoughts you hold on to. It simply lets you experience them over and over again. That's what leads to a hard life and reincarnation. And yes, I know it sounds like contradiction to the idea that we are just experiencing our reality, not creating it, but it isn't. It's another branch of the same root. Remember, these things happen above reason, beyond what we can understand or comprehend at this level. But everything has a purpose and everything is tied together. Now let's look at what happens when we have fantasies. We are encouraged to have fantasies of success or attainment beyond our current life and who we are by how this reality is set up. We constantly read about, hear stories, or are shown pictures and movies of how the wealthy, gifted, successful, and powerful live. It focuses on all the things they have, can do, and we are told, or it's at least hinted at, that we can have all of that. We could just be more like them. The most will never be that, so the best we can do is fantasize about it. Most fantasies involve being different than the role you are currently playing or living an expanded version of that role. You are not accepting who or what you are in this life and the role you are playing. You may even feel cheated when you see what others supposedly have that you don't. Having more money, power, better looks, things, fame, great athletic abilities, sex, and controlling others usually top the list. Yes, even focusing on ascending moving to higher dimensions or other worlds is a fantasy and holds you in 4D vibrations. Whether it's wanting to be a professional athlete who performs beyond what normal humans can do and receives more pay in one year than most people make in a lifetime, being a superhero, a movie star, a singer, a CEO, founder, or investor in companies before they became huge, a successful lost treasure hunter, a very attractive, a powerful politician, a lottery winner, Jackpot are huge prize winners or reality star. We are constantly showing others who supposedly have what we don't or accomplish more than us. There are advertisements that abound for dealerships and stores selling high end products for the rich, and most stores have various cost and quality levels of the same product, so you can see just how successful you are how you, by what level you can afford. There are endless examples in this reality of what we could become even it's only in our mind. Every time the lottery prize gets high, they interview people and ask what would they do with the money to encourage people to fantasize and to seek an almost impossible prize. Look at how many people buy sports teams clothing and gear in order to be closer to being like their favorite star. When they are watching the games, you know there are times when they wish they were the one down there playing and being the superstar, the one worshipped by others. It's a fantasy being played out on the field in front of them, rather than having to create it all in their mind. It saves a lot of work that way, even though it's really all in your mind to begin with. Products and clothing sold by the stars are bought by the public with the same intention, to be more like someone they are told is better than them. Think about the number of contests going on every day, the TV game shows, and the high number of scratcher tickets we can buy and supposedly win great prizes. Of course, you're always told someone else won, but you could be next. Programs like The Secret and The Law of Attraction encourage people to see themselves having and being all that they want over and over again with the idea that constant fantasizing will help them attain it. Well, they're right in that those thoughts produce the results because remember, 
thoughts are coming after he had already manifest someplace else. That energy is going to 4D. And all you get from it in 3D is a slightly better feeling of your ego during the fantasy that encourages you to do it again. It releases the endomorphins and the other type of feel-good things in your brain. So you do it over and over again. And by the way, the same thing happens when you're doing prayer. You're giving that energy. The energy is going to 4D and all you're getting is a good feeling from it. So Jesus told you about fantasies in the Bible when he said, Take no thought. In the King James Version, Matthew 6.25, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, as ye put it on, as ye shall put on. He is not the life more than meat, and the body more than raiment. He's basically telling you that everything is going to be taken care of and provided for you, so don't worry about your fantasies. Again, it's all allegoric in nature, remember that. Think about how many small fantasies people have on a daily basis, either intentionally or as their mind drifts during the day. They see a house or a car they'd like to have, and they think about what it would be like to have it, what they would do with it, and how it would change their life for the better, of course. They spend time changing how a conversation went, or how they wanted it to go so that they can come out ahead, or even have conversations with people that aren't even there. They never do it in real life, but they have it in their head. Uh, they see the dream trip that pops up in their head every time they see a picture of that location. And they even think, and even the idea of thinking about being someplace else other than where you are is a fantasy. And the fantasy list, of course, goes on and on. And of course, along with those fantasies of getting and having all, comes all the negatives of why they can't have it. And that is 4D food. Even the Bible, when you understand its meaning, tells you about what your thoughts can do. Mark 7, 22, Mark 7, 20 through 23, King James Version. And he said, That which cometh out of the man, that defiled the man. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceeds all, proceeds evil thoughts, adulteries, fornicators, murderers, thefts, covetedness, wickedness, deceit, vivaciousness, and evil eye, blasphemy, pride, and foolishness. All these evil thoughts come from within and defile the man. He's telling you about your thoughts, your ego thoughts, that are taking you to 4D, and they're manifesting there, not in this area. Think about what happens each time one of those fantasies doesn't happen. It enforces the idea that they can't really have or achieve it because of who they are and where they are stuck, which makes them like themselves even less or blame someone else as the reason they can't get it. This in turn increases their desire to fantasize about being a different them and not deal with their current life in reality. So think about when you're having a conversation with yourself or giving a play-by-play -play in your head of what you are doing, what you did, or what you're feeling. It's like you have a narrator describing your life, but is it really necessary? The answer is no. So why do we do it? When you go to the supermarket to buy fruits, vegetables, or other products, do you have a conversation with yourself while picking out what you want? And why do we do that? When our eyes and our hands can give us all the information we need about the products, and we can feel if it's the right one or not. And many would say, well, we're working out in our head to decide if that is what we want or the best deal. I guess you could say, we've already made the choice, so now we're trying to understand why. Think about the second Matrix movie when Neo's talking to the Oracle. We did it because when we changed from observing and feeling that apple or that fruit or vegetable or whatever it may be, that 5D is the feeling and knowing and creating thought awareness, it creates emotion, which is 4D. We do the same thing in our daily lives with almost everything we observe and interact with. So think about when you have had an spiritual experience where you get information or have an experience and you just know what it was, yet you can't describe it. That feeling, allowing, the knowing is a 5D connection. And we can't describe it because 5D feelings and knowings don't exist in 4D. So it can't be described by 3D, 4D words. It's a feeling. It's not really an emotion. And emotion is more the 4D. We're having a similar experience when we look at it and hold that product in the store without thought. We know if it's what we want, without having to talk to ourselves about it. 
when we use thought and then talk to ourselves about that product or almost anything in our daily lives, we are moving away from the 5D feeling back to the emotional 4D. The words are creating an emotional response and that makes this reality seem real. This process is all about keeping 4D, thus 3D, existing and moving us away from the feeling knowing that comes from 5D. 3D is about experiencing feelings and emotions and that's why and what our words and thoughts create. As I mentioned earlier, when we're able to balance the feelings, 5D and emotional aspects, 4D, we may shift to a new reality dimension that we haven't experienced before. We're going to combine, I think it's going to be a combination of, of the three, five uh, together. 4D will disappear, but it will become something, something different. Am I saying we shouldn't have wants, desires, or fantasies? Like the answer to many questions in this reality, the answer is yes and no. And I'll explain it further as we look at what living in the moment, being more aware of what, being more aware of where our thoughts are coming from and how we can use those thoughts. When we're being in the moment, and I don't want to say focus on being in the moment, because being in the moment can mean just being and not really focusing on anything. We are more aware of our thoughts. When we are working on a task or interacting with others, we can and should put our attention or focus there, and that is also being in the moment. It's more about keeping your mind open and not letting it drift to every thought or fantasy that pops up hundreds or thousands of times every day. Focus on those thoughts that are useful at the time. If it starts to, if your mind starts to drift to something that is not relevant to where you are or what you are doing, say no. Clear your mind or focus on what you are doing. Bring it back into back into almost to a point of neutrality. There have been many times when I was giving a talk and even job promotions where I took no thought and the talker answer to the questions came out better than I ever could have by thinking it through. It was the ego 4D stepping out and the 5D stepping in to answer because it knew the correct response. Remember, these are aspects of ourselves. These are not outside entities or beings. It's us. When it was over, I have and had a very little memory of the information or the answers that I gave and even the questions. The only reason I know it went well was the people in the class and the interviewers told me how great the class was or how perfect the interview questions were. Now, I can't do it on demand, but I know when I'm supposed to do it, it will happen. Since you don't understand your fantasies, wants, and desires come mostly from 4D and you only gain some slightly good feeling emotions rather than the material reality, you'll want to know how do I get those things to manifest in 3D without having the energy go to 4D. But before I get to that, remember that all thoughts, whether from 4D or 5D, all come from the Creator of God and that all dimensions and realities are part of that creation from the thought. You are having an experience that was set at the moment of creation. And no matter what you do, it's part of the experience you are supposed to have. It's still fun to enjoy the illusion of choice, even knowing that you don't really have the choice. But it's a lot more relaxing when you know that the Creator, you, has already taken care of everything that's going to be coming. We will have thoughts come through and still have the desire for different things and to have different experiences, because that is part of the experience we're supposed to have. 3D is a reality of ego reception, and we were designed the same way to receive. The way to have those thoughts manifest in your 3D reality is to stay what you want and then let it go. Don't start fantasizing about it, what you're going to do with it, and how you want it to go. Because once you start that thought process, it becomes a 4D energy, and you know what happens to 4D energy. By having the thought and then letting it go, you are allowing your 5D energies to start shifting your realities and events so it can come to you in 3D rather than manifesting in the 4D reality. The Creator knows how it should happen, so stop telling Him how to do it. You'll get what you are supposed to have, and at the same time, the reason that exists is yours. Due to the universe, when we're playing out thoughts in our mind, it's the same as if it's happening in our 3D reality which is also a mind projection. And you know, once we have experience in our thoughts or fantasies in 4D, it's considered experience, so there's no reason for it to manifest in our 3D reality. 
The only place you can receive anything is in the moment, so spend as much time as possible there. If you're looking to the future for what you want, the future never comes, no matter how long you wait or how hard you focus. So this concept goes back to the Bible verse mentioned earlier, Matthew 6.25, about taking no thought about what you need or want. This also becomes a paradox, because everything you are going to need and get is already set and waiting for you at the moment. Yet by changing your thought process, you can shift what you are getting. Allow yourself to flow with the universe and go with your feelings, not just your thoughts. Learn to tell the difference between them, and your life will be much smoother. Don't focus on wanting. Focus on living. I'm not telling you that if you want something, ask for it in a thought and then let it go, and that you will get everything that you want. Because what you get does have to do with some of what the role you're experiencing, the, how you, the experience you were set up to have. At the same time, you in this role can receive anything. Because remember, all possibilities exist. If you're having trouble with these concepts, then just live in the moment and know that everything you need is always going to be provided in that moment. Don't stress ahead of time about it coming because it's already there. If you didn't get it, then it wasn't needed yet because there's an experience you need to have first. And added note, think about how you hear the voices in your head when your ears are on the outside of your skull and there's no mouth or vocal cords in the brain to produce sound. You aren't actually hearing anything, yet there seems to be a voice in your head talking most of the time. We call it our thoughts, but what is it? The voices are the connection to the spirit world, of which the 5D and the 4D ego are a part of it. It's called consciousness. It's a long time ago I talked about the idea that consciousness is the connection between the physical and the spiritual. That's what the voices are. Think of our body like a ventriloquist dummy, with something putting the voices in our head and mouth. Like in a ventriloquist show, the dummy moves its face and body to be in line with what's being said, so it seems more real. We are sending the voice and being in the body to make it respond at the same time. Have you ever said something, and as soon as you did, ask, why did I say that? Well, now you know where that thought came from, and that there was a purpose behind it. More than likely, it made you feel uncomfortable and have to deal with a situation you would rather not have. Do you still think you're the one here? The one of you here is still running the one running your life? Anyway, thank you.